Hi everyone, this video is part of Macquarie University's coding tutorials, and in this video we'll be discussing the concept of a null object. A null object is a reference that has explicitly initialized a null rather than being instantiated or has been left uninitialized. In Java, this means that the reference variable is pointing to nothing or has no object assigned to it. It's important to understand the difference between a null object and an uninitialized object. An uninitialized object simply means that a reference has not been assigned an object, whereas a null object is one that has been explicitly set to the null value. In both cases, however, the object is null. This is because when we declare a reference variable, it is automatically assigned a default value of null. This means until an object is explicitly assigned to the reference variable, the reference will point to nothing. Now let's take a look at an example of a null object of our car class. We created a car class of instance variables in our previous video, and we're going to use it here to demonstrate how null objects work. In this example, we first create a car variable and set it to null. The second car variable we make, we leave it uninitialized. Notice we don't use the new keyword here. This is because no new memory is being allocated. When we try to print the make of the null car, we got a null pointer exception. This error is a runtime error, which means that the program compiled successfully, but the error occurred when the program was run. This is because we are trying to get the make of a car that doesn't exist. Now, when we try to get the make of the uninitialized car, we get a compilation error. The compiler here has detected that there is no way this car reference has been initialized, and it's trying to let us know before we actually get to run our program. Notice the difference between this and when we made a car object in the last video, leaving everything as default. When we print the make of my car from the previous video to the screen, we get null printed to the console, but no error. The make is null and not yet determined, but the car, my car, does exist. Notice there is also a big difference between an object itself being null and when one of its attributes is null. When working with objects, it's important to take care that we do not try to use them without first checking if they are null, as attempting to use a null object will result in a null pointer exception. Here is how we could only print the make of a car if the car is not null. One common use case for null objects is in arrays. If we have an array of objects and we want to check if a particular index contains an object, we can check if the reference at that index is null. This allows us to handle the case where an object is not present without throwing an exception or error. For a refresher on how this works with arrays, please refer to the video on null arrays in the Comp1000 video series. There are two ways we can depict a null object in a memory diagram. We can either make it a block of memory pointing to null, or make the reference itself equal to null. This depends on preference and is a matter of assessing what makes it clearer depending on the particular memory diagram you are working on. In conclusion, null objects are references we can refer to as being null or pointing to null. Both ways of saying this mean the same thing. Understanding how to handle null objects is crucial in programming, and it's important to check for null objects before trying to work with them. Now, in the next video, we'll keep exploring objects, references, and memory diagrams by understanding the difference between reference copies and instance copies. See you there!